strong women. Today we're doing loopy legs and booty. So you'll need your fabric loop. Go ahead and get the resistance that works for you. I'm using the pink one today just so that you can see it on film. And we're going to go ahead and warm up with it. And so we're just going to step side to side. Make sure you have a mat and some water. Let's just get going. Let's start. We're going to be working all those legs, all those gluteal muscles. Pull that up. Twist out your spine. Push your hip flexors back. I'm going to rotate out my hips, so taking that hip flexor and putting it in external rotation. I'm going to bring my knees up to my chest. I'm going to tap the inside of my heel, open up those hips, and then tap back. My recommendation is that if you are using a very heavy resistance loop to go ahead and warm up without it and then add the loop right when we get ready to do some of these leg movements. I like to use the pink one on film because you can see it, but it's pretty light so I can warm up in it. Step side to side. Remember when we warm up, we want like three to four minutes of movement, right? Rhythmic movement. And you want to mimic some of those things that you're going to do. Your brain is going to tell your body and your body is going to tell your brain, this is what we're doing. So we get used to it. Just moving all the way around the legs. And march that out. All right, we should be nice and warmed up now. The first thing we're going to do are squats. So it's going to look like a regular squat, wide squat, and a ski squat. I'm going to work right side first and then left side. And here we go. Regular squat, wide squat, ski squat, stand. Regular squat, wide squat, ski squat, stand. Regular. Wide, exhale, ski squat, exhale, stand. Exhaling out on the exertion. So when you stand up, come back down to earth, inhale, and then exhale that away, step side to side. So we're gonna be moving in between on those rests. So we're gonna get blood pulling. And then we're gonna to work to the other side. Regular wide, ski squat, stand up. Regular knees stacked over the ankles. If you're five, four and below, you can do tight ski squat. If you need a little bit of space because you're tall, open your legs up a little bit. Keep that apple under your chin. And done. Step side to side. We're going to take a side squat, come back, twist, jump, side squat, come back, twist, jump. So it's going to look like this. And 
and that's what it's going to look like. Go ahead and get ready, and then we work. Get your hips all the way around. Notice that I'm not doing anything with my neck. Well, my heart rate's coming up. And rest that out. And march it out. Go ahead and get some water. And meet me on the ground. Now that you've met me on the ground, I'm going to come down to my forearms. I want to make sure my hips are in alignment. So two fists between your knees. Drop down onto your forearms so you don't hurt your wrist flexors, extensors, and your elbow tendon. My hips are neutral, look to the end of my mat. Now I'm going to take my foot in dorsiflexion, push up, and bring my knee back down to my other knee. We're going to do right side. Exhale as you push up. Inhale as you come back down. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. That's it. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale it up. Inhale. One more time. Exhale. And inhale. So you can take a little break by falling into a child's pose if you want. I'm going to move around in different ways so that you can see this exercise. Now the next one's going to look like this. The corner so you can see this a little bit better. I'm going to be in that same position. I'm going to drive my leg up as far as it can go and then I'm just going to pulse it. Pulse it. So I want to keep going higher, higher. I don't want to bring my knee back down to my other knee. Same leg. Yes, same leg. Up, flex, push. Like you're pushing the ceiling with your foot. Apple under the chin. Not dropping my head below my heart. Exhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale on the exertion. That's the press. Notice my other foot is in a toe stand so that I can keep my alignment and not turn my hip. I want my shoulders and my hips to follow each other. And then you can come down to a child's pose or you can take your hips side to side, what we call wag the dog. So wagging the tail of the dog just to give your hips some release. It's like doing a windshield wiper if you were laying in a supine position. But we're doing this in prep. We are still working the same leg. I'm going to come down once again, so now we've done all the way up, all the way back, and we've done all the way up pulse. Now we're going to come up. I'm going to take my knee over my other leg, over, push it up, and bring it back. Up, over, up, back. Same leg. And we work. Up, over, up and back, 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 up, over, up and back. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and inhale. And again, you can take your hips side to side and rest that out. We are still working on the same leg. This time, you're going to come down, straighten your leg out. So we're going to circle one way, then we're going to circle the other way, and then we're going to swim. And your glutes are going to be on fire, and that's okay. So we circle. Make in little circles, point your toe at the end. Again, nothing going on with the neck, it's in a neutral position. My movement is at my hip, but my shoulders and my hips are in alignment. They're squaring off to each other. I'm not pushing everything into my joints. 
I am keeping my knee soft, but I'm not bending it. Just keeping it soft so I've got oxygen coming in, circling around, working those glutes. And then you may have to sit into your hips and that's okay. Now we wanna go in the opposite directions. You're really working that piriformis, those gluteal muscles, your low back, and then the full extension of your leg. Cause this is loopy legs, using those bands, using those loops and booty, right? Using those, getting those glutes to come to the party. And we work in the opposite direction. So whatever way you were going, go the other way. And it may feel a little awkward. Now, Beth, what can I do if this hurts my knee? Right? Keep going. You can roll your mat up, right? Make it cushy. Let's make it cushy. If that hurts your knee, you can put your knee on a block. You can use a knee pad. You can do this in a standing position, like standing Pilates and stand and rock your leg around. So you could do it that way too. So there are still ways to get this done. Don't worry. So if that is something that hurts your knees, just let me know. I'll do a little video of what you can do instead. But we want to keep moving on because we have that other side to do. I don't want your um, glutes to be <laughs> uneven. So we go to the other side. I'm just going to turn to the other side. You're just going to stay where you are and lift your other leg. But I want you to be able to see the form. So again, Beth, why don't we do it this way? Well, you could, but this puts a lot of pressure on your wrist flexor and extensor into the elbow tendon. And most people drop into their shoulders, right? All the weight goes up here. Then what I see a lot of is this. So I see turning the hip and then you're offset with your shoulders. This is a little safer on the wrist flexors, extensors, elbow tendon, not pushing everything into your shoulder. You are more declined, so you need to make sure your apple stays under your chin. But this solidifies my shoulders and forces my shoulders and my hips to follow each other. So it's less likely to be, it would be awkward to tip my hip versus tipping my hip here. So it's a little bit more awkward. This solidifies the alignment, the joint, and keeps your tendons and ligaments safe. And so that's why. Other side, flex the foot, lift up, bring it back down to your knee. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. In case you don't know, remember, use your breath work to cue you that you're breathing and not holding your breath. And then once you end, you can come again down into a child's pose or you can rock the dog. Going back where we're going to pulse straight up to the top. So I'm coming here, lifting up and then pulsing. So I don't want to come below that. I want to go all the way up and then pulse from there. Exhale, exhale, exhale. Keeping that apple under the chin, keeping my neck in a neutral position, not dropping everything into the shoulders. Hi Hope, glad you could come in. Say hello to everybody and then rest. So again, you can rock your hips side to side. You're going to really feel your glutes and your hamstrings and those rotator muscles that connect your hamstrings to your glutes. So that's where you're going to feel it. You're also going to feel it in your low back. So what do we want to do? We want to keep our spine and our abs tight together. Like you're squeezing skin to muscle to bone. Pit of the belly, 
to your spine. All right, now we want to come up, over, up, and back. So I'm literally taking my knee over my other knee, tapping down, lifting up, and bringing it back down. I want to get my form right. And then notice I'm not doing a lot of flexion in my back. I want to pull the pit of the belly in and up and then stack my scapulae so that I'm keeping this nice, neutral, long line of energy. And we work. Up, over, up, and back. Up, over, up, and back. Up, over, up, and back. Up, over, that's it, up, and back. Up, over, up, and back. Up, over, up, and back. Up, over, up, and back. And then again, find that nice stretch for yourself. And remember, if hanging on that one knee is too much, you can put a yoga blanket down. You can roll your mat up. There are yoga knee pads that you could get for this type of, I'm in a prone position, or you could stand up and do those leg exercises. Um, it would look different. It would be like a hamstring curl in a stand for the lift, but then the circles, which we're getting ready to do, that would be standing leg circles. All right, and then we have our circle. So my leg's going to come straight out. Point the toe, circle around. And then rest, rest that out. And again, you can take your hips side to side. You can squeeze down to a child's pose. Anything that you need to do to um, stretch that uh, glute muscle out. And then we wanna go to the other side. Find your form, set your timer, lengthen out, and we circle back to the other side. So it's going this way, so I need to go this way. And we breathe, we don't wanna hold our breath. Remind yourself to breathe audibly, use your breath. And remember we talked about etiquette, so not so loud that you're disturbing other people if you're working out in a gym. But if you're at home, breathe as loud as you can to keep reminding yourself to breathe and exhale out on that exertion. Now we want to um, swim it out. That's the last one here. And up and down we go. Just a nice little swim. Now, feet are stable, right? My foot's pointed, it's stable. My ankle is my mover, so you can feel like loosening up in the ankle joint. That's where you'd be swimming, it would be moving. Your knee is stable, solid. Your hips are mover, that's why it's coming up and down, that ball and socket joint. I'm gonna pull the pit of the belly in and up to keep my low back from hurting here. And then release it down. Perfect. I'm going to walk my legs out and walk my legs in. Walk my legs out, walk my legs in. Walk out, walk in, walk out, walk in. It's like doing a seated jumping jack without jumping. So you can work those inner thighs and outer thighs with the resistance band. And you're leaning back a little bit. So you're really working your core as well. It's almost like a little boat. Out, out, in, in. Then you could lay all the way down into a supine position. I'm gonna pull my band up to my calves here. 
So you see the band on my calves. You do it this way so that you can see this better. Right? I'm going to dorsiflex my toes towards my knees. Look straight up, apple in the chin. And then I'm going to pulse. Out and in. breathing and then done do is get some water and meet me back on the floor standing up loops up to my quads again roll my shoulders tuck everything in draw my body up dorsiflex my foot so i'm going to be lifting at the hip flexor and then pulsing up so i'm going to start right leg Work around that hip joint again. Get into the full length of the legs and into the hips and into your glutes. So we're working legs and booty today. And I'm going to lift and lift, lift. Now, you may need a chair. You may need your wall. That's okay. Soften the standing knee on the standing leg. So you've got oxygen coming in. Look at a focal point so that you can keep your balance. Just keep looking at the screen. Exhale, lift, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Keep breathing, keep your focus, and then drop it down. You're gonna feel that all the way down the center of your quadricep. Now we're gonna move around to the side, into that IT band, and then around. What I want you to do is, not lift with your foot coming straight down. I want to really dig into the side. So you're going to turn your foot here. So my standing leg, I have softness in the knee joint. My hip flexor follows my knee, follows my ankle. My foot is neutral, just like my body and my head. I'm internally rotated on the other side. As I lift up, I want to drive my foot into the ground and then lift. It's a small movement. What we want to avoid is this or this. So I'm not tilting into my hip. I want to keep them nice and elongated. It's a small movement. And lift. You can put your fingers right on your hip flexor. That's going to allow you to feel if you start to do that. <laughs> so apple under the chin, pull everything nice and tight, lift up, exhale, exhale. Your glutes should be on fire. If they're not on fire yet, consider maybe I need a heavier resistance band. And then release down. Now when we go to the back, we're going to hit the back of the legs, the back of the glutes, your rotators, right, your piriformis, your hamstrings, into the popliteal space, into the calves, and into the Achilles. So all of the back of your leg matters. And what I want to do is step and then dorsiflex my foot and lift. I want to keep lifting at my glute. I don't want to hip hinge at my hip flexor. So I want to stand up as tall as I can and lift up. Lift. Exhale, inhale. and then drop that back down. And you may feel all the way around the hips and you may have to take your hips, maybe in a figure eight, and just stretch them out a little bit. That may feel good. And then we come back to 
the left side. So again, rolling back and lifting. Lift, 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 lift. Draw everything up to the ceiling, nice and tight, nice and tight. Keep this leg lifted. Up, up, feel the resistance. Feel the resistance of the loop. And then drop that down. Woo! They should be getting tired. So now we want to turn it in. I'm gonna lift up. I don't wanna do this. I wanna hold this nice and tight. Small movement, but a lot of work. A lot going on here for a small movement. Soften that standing leg. I just had to remind myself. <laughs> Find your focal point. Breathe in and out. And then release. And then you can step side to side or you can circle out your hips. That may feel better. So it might be a single, single, double, single, single, double, or a figure eight, or just a walk side to side. Just to open that up, you may have to circle it around or push them back, just like we did when we warmed up. I'm gonna keep nice and rhythmic with that. All right, again, getting into, go ahead and get water. We wanna do a little bit more on the hamstrings because we constantly work squats and we wanna work around glutes today. What we wanna do is that one-legged deadlift with our band, I'm gonna lift up, tap down. I want my shoulders and my hips to be squared off. So I have to turn my pinky toe down here and not turn my hip flexor this way. So it looks like this, straight down. Yes, straight down. Yes, not out here. See the difference? My hip is not gonna externally rotate down. I need it to be squared off with my shoulders. So you're looking straight down and trying to keep your hips and your shoulders in alignment. And consider, doesn't have to be all the way down to the ground. Some of you have very tight hamstrings. You could use a chair, lift, tap the chair and come up and start there. Keep stretching those hamstrings. Especially my guys, they have really tight hamstrings. If you're wearing a wallet in the back pocket, your hips are already offset. If you are like me and you drive an SUV that's big for my height. So I have a little car, but it's a little SUV. And to get into it, I have to do this because I'm short. I'm constantly having to stretch out my hip right on the other side because I'm doing this all day long. Getting in the car, getting out of the car, getting in the car, getting out of the car. I'm not doing it on this side. So the exercises, the movements that I do when I work out are super important to keep that alignment and it helps me keep my body parts from being too imbalanced. So we wanna think about how we live our life and then what movements do we need to do to help Balance that out. All right, right side. And we work. Tap down. Exhale. Inhale, come back down to earth. Exhale, come away from, pushing away from gravity. Softness in that standing leg again. Because again, we're working glutes and legs. We're also working a lot of balance. So every time we're on one leg or have to lift one leg off the ground, you're automatically in core and balance. And then rest that out. When you go to the other side, you're just gonna lift the other leg. And we roll it back. 
We are almost done. And you may feel one side is harder than the other or is tighter than the other or you have more range of motion on one side than the other. It's not right or wrong, it's just awareness. Be self-aware. Where are you tight? Where are you stiff? Where are the muscles short? And then where do you have length? Where do you have range of motion? And then think about, I'm done. Think about what goes on in your life that could cause you to have length in one side and be short and tight on the other side. I guarantee you is things that you are doing throughout the day that are making those biomechanical imbalances. The other thing, that's what you can control. The other thing is things that are out of your control. One arm could be longer than the other. One leg could be slightly longer than the other. Where your muscles originate onto your bones could be in two different spots. They're not going to be exactly the same. Hip flexor could land here and land down here. Giving me this. Shoulder, same thing. They're not going to be completely balanced. One could be off. Injuries that you've had through your life with scar tissue are going to make a huge difference on what goes on on your right side and what goes on on your left side. And then there's that dominance. You're right-handed. You're doing things in a certain way. If you're left-handed, you're doing things in a different way. If you use that myofascial slang, so if I have something going on, an injury on the right side, I may have things pop up on my left that are starting to get tight because of another injury. So you always want to look above and below the injured space. So if you have a knee issue going on, look at your shoulder and look at your ankle and let's determine the imbalances because it could be contributing to your knee issue. All that stuff matters. So just throwing that out there, it's not right or wrong. It's just there's things that are going on that it's like a big puzzle. We kind of try to put it together and then make sense out of it and do the movements that work for you. So I'm giving you movements that will help. You notice how we've been doing right side and left side, just so that you can be aware and work on. Let's go to that next one. And we want to work around our muscle, our glutes in particular, by doing kickstand squats. So why do we do that, Beth? Why isn't regular squat enough? Why do I have to do all this movement with my planes of motion and, and legs? Why do? Because so your glutes aren't just one big muscle. They're broken up into medius, maximus, and minimus. And in order to develop and define all of those muscles, you have to move your legs in different planes of motion or in different angles to move around. Our muscles are three-dimensional. They're not flat. It's not, we're not paper dolls. We're not one-dimensional or flat. So if I were to just do only squats, I would be only working one particular muscle, my gluteals, ignoring others and not defining them all the way around. Now I've got imbalances. So I'm at a higher risk for injury because I'm not defining and developing and strengthening all the muscles. So we need to do that. Always constantly think about three dimensions, right? Working around the muscle and defining all of them. It would just be like if you're just working that upper bicep and you ignore your lower arm right? Then we have imbalances. So balance, balance. Symbiotic relationships between muscles, how they work together. One is your primary mover, one is your secondary mover. So they all work together to make your movements. So we're going to do kickstand squats. So I'm in scapation. So if I were to, I call them kickstand squats because think about a bicycle. So I'm the bicycle and I put my kickstand down. Right? And now my bike stands up. I'm putting my legs in scapation. My shoulders and my hips, my hips a little bit right turned here, but my shoulders and my hips are pretty much in alignment. 
Then I sit back. I want this glute coming out so that my knees stay behind my toes and don't drive over my toes. I still want an apple under my chin. So squat form is still the same. I'm just at scapation at an angle with my legs. Now I can work three-dimensionally around the glute muscles. And then here we go. Inhale, exhale, inhale, come down to earth, exhale, load the legs, squeeze your legs, skin the muscle to bone, let that resistance work for you, breathe in, exhale out, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, so it's not here, it's not enough, load it, make it work, and then release. So you can move your legs, move around, and then we can do the other side. Kick stand down. And I take my legs pretty wide. Consider your back foot. Mine are facing 12 o'clock because I can get my booty back here and load my legs without hurting my knee. Some of you have to move your foot at an angle a little bit to make space for your hip and your knee. If your knee feels funny doing it like this, just move it out at an angle a little bit so that your knee follows your ankle. Hip flexor follows knee, follows ankle. Apple under the chin. And then we work. Booty comes back this way and we load it up. Exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Drive your heels into your mat. Your feet are your stabilizers. They're stable. My ankle is my mover, so I might be moving a little bit at the ankle. That's okay. My knees, stable, always. Yes, they're flexing and extending, but uh, they're not shifting. My knee doesn't shift in and shift out. It stays where it needs to be. So my knee is stable. My hips are my movers. Full on socket joint moves around. My low back is going to be stable always. I'm not doing this to get up. I'm not using my low back. I'm using my big muscles, legs to push my body up. If I were to keep doing this all the time, I see this all the time. You're using your low back. You're not using your muscles. All you're doing is wear and tear on the low back. If it already hurts, it's going to hurt even more. So use the muscles that lift your body. Exhale. Strong core, strong abs, strong back, strong back, strong abs, strong legs. We're not thrusting our back to push our movements. We're using our big muscles to lift our body up in stability. And then low back, stable. Thoracic, my shoulders are made for movement, range of motion. My neck isn't wobbling all over the place. Cervical spine, always in a neutral position. I'm going to keep my head above my heart. There you go. All right. We have worked legs without doing our lunges because we did that on another video. I just wanted to give you another opportunity to mix and match. This one is great for legs and glutes and around the hips. That's what we worked. Let me go ahead and bring your knee up and then rotate that ankle joint. That's your mover. Dorsey, flex your foot. Open up and stretch your calf, leg muscles. Sit into your hips, glutes, hamstrings. Sit down into the side, open up your adductors, inner thigh. Keeping that apple under the chin. Lift your leg up and squeeze it together. Quad tendon from the knee all the way up into the hip flexor to stretch your quadricep. Breathe in and out. Now you could go ahead and do that, those same movements, those same exercises three times.
to get that in there. Coming up on the other side, you try to keep these about 30 minutes. Sometimes they're longer. I try to get the movements in that you need. Sit into that hip. Keep them shorter so you can marry it to something else so that you never have the same workout. You're always mixing and matching and getting that done. So if you haven't already, hit our button, like, subscribe, and share. Get into those playlists and start mixing and matching them. Cardio with yoga and strength training and body weight stuff, eccentric to isometric. There's all different forms and ways to have movement in your body, lengthen and strengthen muscles, tendons, wrist flexors and extensors, ligaments, tendons, cartilage. So we want to be always moving, as you know, we want to keep it varied so that you don't adapt and acclimate so your body can keep working past those plateaus. And then we want to be flexible and adaptive, right? So if you're used to working 60 minutes, great, just pop into playlist, get it done. If your day gets crazy and you only have time for 30 minutes, you've got one to work on. If it's even more chaotic than that, don't say I'm going to do it tomorrow. Consider just moving throughout the day and breaking it into small increments. And that's how we become a wayfinder. That's how we get things done. Take that big breath up, breathe in, exhale it away, roll the shoulders, elbows, big circle, one more breath in, and exhale, go in peace, you're done. Please hydrate your bodies, it is that time of year where it's stinking hot outside, and as much as we love summer, we love the, the sun and the sunshine, it gets hot out there. Please keep your body hydrated. I love the sun, but I have to make sure that I've got my hydration in, my extra electrolytes if I'm out in the sun a lot, um, outside in particular, and then coming in and out. So going from hot to cold to hot to cold to hot to cold, that can mess with your um, body temperature. So we need to regulate our bodies really well. So stay hydrated, get in that water. I will see you for the next video. Bye.